Okay, hello everybody to the last talk before lunch. Uh, I will try to explain you a bit uh, the internals of KX at KDump. So my name is Matthias Brugger. I work for SUSE and uh, I work mainly on ARM64. So I work for the enterprise products uh, of SUSE on ARM64 and also contribute to OpenSUSE. And uh, as part of this work, I was uh, working on KXK dump for ARM64, and uh, I want to explain you a bit what I learned. Apart from that, I'm a maintainer of uh, MediaTek on the system, uh, MediaTek system on chips in the Linux kernel, and I do a lot of more stuff. Okay, what will we talk about today? So I will quickly introduce the use cases that uh, exist for KXK dump, and then we will dive into the internals of user space and kernel space. I will just describe a bit what uh, support is given in OpenSUSE, which is uh, for sure in other distributions as well, and uh, we will have a quick demo and QA. Okay. So basically there are three use cases. The first is for me is like the most important one, and uh, for sure is what, why this in the first place was developed. That is to debug a system. So at SUSE, for example, we have a lot of customers that have the hardware and then we don't have, maybe don't have all this hardware in-house or they are running uh, some legacy code on their, on their systems that we don't get a good reproducer when their system crashes. There might be that we don't have good logs because cr uh, kernel crashes so badly that the uh, logs are actually not usable. And then for this case, we can use kdump to create a dump file, uh, which then afterwards you can inspect to see what actually happened and why the system crashed. Uh, the next use case is to boot a new kernel without rebooting the system. So that's, uh, for me, when I first heard it was a bit weird, but uh, the idea behind this is that when you have, for example, a, system, a really big machine which will take a long time to uh, to boot up because this firmware has to enumerate all the hardware, etc. Or you have a system um, which is a pre-production system and even the IAA firmware is under development and you have some beta version of the firmware. Then you can have bugs in the firmware and uh, so it might not be uh, sure that every time you boot the system, the system comes up. And uh, so if you work on some kernel stuff, then it might be useful to just reboot the kernel from the kernel and skip all the firmware all the firmware initialization. Or there was also a talk yesterday about uh, booting, using Linux to boot Linux, and uh, that is exactly what is uh, done with uh, IBM S390, which are some really big machines, and they have like as a bootloader uh, Linux, and then they k-exec into the distribution kernel. And throughout the talk, I will talk about the first use case, which is debugging a system. The other two use cases, uh, well, they're basically the same, uh, uh, technically, and uh, I will just, I won't, I, I won't go into detail about this. And, uh, and there, uh, the KX -K dump has like some generic infrastructure, and, and, but there are some architecture-specific parts and uh, where, the, where we go deeper into the architecture-specific parts, I will talk about ARM64, because that's what I know best. Um, so there are different uh, names for the production system. So the idea when you debug a system, you have a production system with your production workload running, and some really bad bug in the kernel happens, and then a, a, a capture system gets started. There are different names for this capture system, crash system, panic system. I will try to keep with capture system or capture kernel in this presentation to, yeah, to not confuse too much. So how does this look like? I made a little crappy graphic. So imagine this is the, um, you can see this here, right? Yeah. Uh, imagine this are, is a memory of your, of your system. So you have uh, uh, somewhere in memory a production kernel which is running, which, uh, which shows this arrow, and then you have your system RAM, and when the production kernel uh, crashes, then you, the capture kernel gets started, and the capture kernel then takes all the memory in the kernel of the production system and creates a dump file. So which parts are involved in this? So there's a user, sp uh, user space part which is called kxec tools that is 
basically used to prepare the capture system. Then, of course, the kernel itself that, uh, and, uh, and that needs to execute and capture the kernel on crash. And there are some other user space tools like make dump file, which is, a f um, which is used to create uh, the actual dump file from the capture system. And uh, then to inspect this dump, you can use crash or crash Python, which is a implementation effort done by SUSE to uh, those that you can use Python scripting to, uh, uh, to inspect the dumps. And then there are some distro programs to, uh, to, to make it easier to set things up. Okay, so KXEC tools. Uh, there are uh, different tools in the, in the repository, but the most important one is called KXEC. Though this uh, command line, what it uh, actually does, it loads a kernel in an initRD and reuses the uh, boot parameter of the kernel uh, of your system. And uh, then you can, with dash E, execute this new kernel and that it will KXEC in the new kernel. And what it, uh, what it internally does, it calls reboot reboot with uh, some magic number and this magic number then the kernel recognizes and then says okay I don't have to reboot into the firmware but re reboot into the loaded kernel and uh, there is also now it confusion starts uh, so you can also load a capture kernel which is done with dash p which stands for panic <laughs> and you can un unload the, the kernels and uh, there are also some uh, i specific options which are not relevant for us now. Okay, let's have a look under the, under the hood how these OKXEC tools actually works. So we remember that the capture kernel will make a dump file out of, uh, uh, of, the, uh, of the production system. Though the question is, uh, how, how the, uh, does he do it? Uh, the, how does he do it? And what does he need to know? So he needs to know where the actual capture kernel is so that you can load the capture kernel when the production system crashes. Uh, we must know where the usable memory is for the capture kernel because we can't use just the memory that your production system uses because you would override the memory and maybe will, will override the hints you need to find out what really happened. And you need to know where the user space of the of your capture capture system is, and you need to know where the production kernel and memory can be found. So KXEC tools uh, or KXEC in general, what it does, uh, when you boot your production system, you pass a kernel parameter which is called crash kernel, which is uh, creates um, a reserved memory area. So if this down here, this box is the whole memory you have then the gray part is uh, the reserved memory area, which is then not used by the, uh, by the production system. And uh, it can be a bit tricky to do so because you don't want to have this memory area too big because it will be taken out of your production system, but you don't want to have it to be too small because then, then maybe your capture system won't start. And uh, you can see there are like uh, different segments in the in this uh, reserved memory area, and that these are called KXX segments. And this is a data structure which is shared between the user space and the kernel, and it basically uh, uh, describes uh, is used in the following way. When you, for example, load the kernel with KXX tools, what KXX tools does, it allocates a buffer on uh, on this uh, address, uh, well, well, on this pointer with the size of buff size and then copies the kernel uh, into this buffer and uh, then it searches in the reserved memory area and a hole where it can uh, actually later copy the kernel to and points this void mem, void mem pointer to this location. So that would be to here. And that's it, what it does with, K and with the kernel and initRD. And for the ELF core headers, the device tree blob in the purgatory, uh, I will explain now what, the, what these are and what they are doing. So the ELF core header is like the core part of uh, KDump so that the capture system knows uh, where the memory of the production system is. So it is an ELF, uh, ELF header, which has, uh, has different program headers which then points to the um, uh, points into the memory of the production system. 
So remember this ELF core header lives in the reserved memory area. And uh, the first program headers are for each CPU, which, is, which are called crash nodes. Crash nodes is a, a crash node is a small part of memory in the production sy system that is reserved for every CPU, so that when the CPU crashes, it can write the register state, uh, PID, etc., in there, so that you can later find out in which state every CPU was when the crash happened. And uh, from user space, you can read sys in this sys device uh, file to find out for every CPU where this memory is. Uh, where this memory is and KXIC tools, what it does, it actually writes the, uh, the address in the, in the program header. Then there's another um, important data structure which is called VM Core Info. This data is a data structure uh, also in the production kernel, which uh, holds all the information about, uh, 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 about the data structures of the kernel. So, for example, the page size of your system, C offset of flags and some structs, etc. So, we'll, you will need this information later to actually understand uh, in your dump file uh, how the kernel looks like. And uh, this file can also be read from the, by KXEC tools through this uh, sysfs command, and it has um, uh, the address and the size, which gets also copied in here. And uh, yeah, that's it. And uh, last but not least, you have the memory in the kernel itself. For this, um, what KXEC tools does it parses proc io mem where you can find the system uh, system ram parts and where in in which uh, part of the system ram the kernel gets loaded and takes this address as well and put it in, in 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 some headers and this structure is then later used to create a file in the capture system that's called proc vm core from which you can create the dump file then so uh, next seg segment is the device tree or device tree blob. Uh, who knows what a device tree is? Uh, quite some, quite uh, quite some people. Nice. So device tree is like the equivalent to ACPI, which is used by ARM and by uh, by PowerPC. ARM64 actually has the possibility to boot with device tree or with ACPI. And um, so to come over this uh, confusion, what, uh, uh, what the system does is when the production system boots up, the IFI stub creates a small um, flattened, de flattened device tree which just holds some really uh, basic information about the U UEFI and uh, about where the init RD uh, can be found and the, uh, and the boot parameters. And, uh, and the KXEC tool, uh, KXEC tool reads this file and then updates uh, the init RD, init, RD, init RD and points it to the init RD in the, in the reserved memory area. Then it adds, uh, adds a, um, a value for the ELF core header, which points to this segment, and the usable memory range, which would be all the rest of your reserved memory area, which is not used by the KXX segments, which is then the memory that, you, that your capture system can actually use to boot up and, uh, and do all the stuff you wanted to do in, uh, yeah. And the last seg segment we have is the purgatory. So the purgatory decides over heaven or hell, and heaven, of course, is uh, that you are lucky that you can boot your, your capture kernel to actually uh, create a dump. And hell is that your system is so broken that you can't even boot that, um, uh, boot that capture system. And how does it do that? Well, the purgatory, when getting set up by KXEC tools, it holds uh, the hatches of the other four um, KXEC segments. And when the purgatory is like the entry point uh, after a crash, uh, first, what it first does, it checks if uh, the hatches are correct. Mm, because if not, then you uh, you can't uh, you you can't be sure that the capture system you boot up uh, really holds the information that's valid. For example, imagine that the ELF core header is the 
uh, is broken somehow and points somewhere else, then the information you have is not, not correct and you won't be able to uh, reliably debug the system. There's also a, a, a command option for KXEC tools to ignore these checks, which is nice because then you can you go always to heaven. Yeah. Um, okay, what the uh, purgatory actually does uh, for ARM64, it looks like this. I hope you can read it more or less. So, so this is uh, the assembler. It's not the whole file. I, uh, I deleted some some lines, but basically what it does, it creates, uh, it uh, has a small stack, then it calls purgatory, which is a C function, which the only thing it does actually is check the hashes of the different segments, and it, it then loads the kernel, in, in a, the kernel address in a, reg in a register, the device tree address in a register, and boots the kernel, and this part is just like the normal way to boot ARM64, so nothing, nothing special in here. And the uh, KXEC tool, what it does, what it does with uh, C's uh, file is it updates the kernel address in the in device tree address to point actually to the kernel and the device tree in the reserved memory area. Yeah, so then in the end, uh, our knowledge tree, call it like this, looks like this. So the purgatory, which is like the first First to be executed after crash, he knows where the kernel and the device tree is. It starts a kernel, and the kernel uh, can read from the register the device tree, and the device tree holds the information of the ELF core header, the init RD, and the usable memory it can use. So that's good. So and uh, now we have set up all these segments in KXEC tools. And then we have to pass this to the to, your, to the production kernel so that he can actually prepare for a crash to actually start the purgatory in the capture system. So this is done uh, using the kexec load system call. There's also another call kexec file load, which I won't explain here because it works a bit different because it does m most of the stuff we have seen here in the kernel space. Um, so it passes the entry point of the purgatory to the kernel and the uh, addresses of the segment, well, the, an array of the segments and the number of segments that exists. And that's all what we have to do in user space. And uh, now we have passed all this information to the kernel and now I will talk uh, a bit about what the kernel actually does. So in the kernel uh, internals, we will look into the three parts. So there's the first part is and that the production kernel prepares uh, the capture system uh, w through the kexec load syscall, and then we will have a look what actually happens when your when your production system crashes, um, and then we will see what happens when the kernel boots up. So when you load your capture system, what the uh, what the kernel actually does, it just checks that you're root because you don't want to, any, you, to have any user to load a new capture system on your, uh, on your, uh, on your machine. It checks some flags that uh, basically, basically means that you are not allowed to load another capture system if you have, have already one loaded. So you have to unload it first and then, you, and, and then load it. So the reason behind this is that if you in the updating of the capture system, you get a crash, then everything is lost. <coughs> and then it, uh, it checks the segment number, so you have like a, a limit, which is, I think, 16 of segment numbers you can use, so we use four, so we are totally fine here. And it uh, then creates a structure, or it, uh, allocates a structure in the kernel, which is called k-image, and this holds uh, the k-exec segments, and um, the entry point of the purgatory, and it allocates uh, or it holds a control page, which is later used to actually load the purgatory. We will see that in a, in a minute. Um, well, then there will, the uh, kernel will do some sanity checks. So basically, it checks that the um, that the segments are not overlapping because it would uh, mean that something got really wrong that they are page aligned um, and uh, that they're in the, in the reserved memory area. And uh, it also checks that the mem size is bigger or the same as the buffer size 
The reason behind this is that the memory in the that you use in the reserved memory area is page aligned, and uh, this buffer is created by malloc in user space, so it's not page aligned. So this can be bigger and can't be smaller. And uh, last but not least, it checks that uh, all the memory you need by your KXX segments is uh, at least, uh, uh, well, is a maximum as big as half of the, uh, of the RAM that you're available on your system. Um, so when that's all okay, then it uh, calls copy from user and it copies this buffer with the buffer size um, into the address uh, of each segment in the, re in the reserved memory area. And then it uh, clears the PTE valid bit for these segments, for the pages of these segments, which basically means that, it's, um, that the MMU won't uh, access it. Um, so that's that's what it does. Well, last thing, uh, that's not in the slides, but it actually sets uh, a flag to say that we have a capture system loaded. And um, then when the kernel crashes, um, it uh, realizes that the capture system is loaded and then it starts to disable the IRQs in the CPU registers. Um, it will write into the VM core data structure um, also the time of the crash, so that we have, when you have a, a crash dump, you can also uh, read out when the system actually crashed. And then it will send an, uh, a signal to uh, all the other process, uh, uh, processors in your system to uh, shut down, but to shut down using crash, uh, the CPU crash stop, which is a special um, handler that basically writes uh, all the CPU register or all the CPU information into the crash nodes as we have seen beforehand um, and disables the uh, IRQs and then uh, tells the uh, firmware to actually shut down the CPU. So that in the end you have only one CPU running or well, that is what you hope. So he checks if only one CPU running that's a CPU that crashed. If this is not the case, then you have a problem because it can then be that the crash system, the capture system won't 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 boot uh, boot up correctly. But uh, he just throws a warning and goes on because you already crashed your production system. So, uh, what can you lose? Yeah. Then it uh, uses a, a relocation control, uh, re re some relocation code that copy uh, will be copied in the control page. Uh, this code sh um, shuts down MMU and disables the caches, and then it checks if you have to relocate the kernel. That's the case if you just want to boot a new kernel, and so that's not the, not the case here. And then it jumps to the purgatory. We have seen what the purga, purga sorry we have seen what the purgatory does beforehand. So it checks the KXX segments and then loads the kernel. And the loaded, the loaded kernel can then uh, read this device tree entries, which point to these uh, uh, KXX segments to to know which, uh, where and how big the memory is it uses, and where you can find the elf coheader and where you can find the initrd, and then can start the initrd. And um, he reserves some memory where he copies in the ELF core header. So remember the ELF core header only holds uh, pointers, so he copies the pointers and not the dereference of the pointers. And it creates a file that's called proc vm core, which is a file that you can then use to create a dump file. And uh, this file has a special, a special read function which um, dereferences the pointers, so that when you read this file, you actually read the memory here and not just the address. <coughs> okay, so distribution part. So uh, to set, set this all up, it's a bit difficult because apart from deciding how big uh, your reserved memory area uh, should be, you would need uh, to have an, an, a, a special init RD and it depends on, for example, where you want to save your dump file in your capture, in your capture system. If you want to save it, like for example, via FTP to an FTP server, then you will need um, you will need uh, all the drivers for your uh, for your 
for your network card, you will need a, a network stack and, and you will need a FTP programs in your init ID. And then, or when you you want to save it to disk, which is disk, the, which is not what you should do because you could could have a crash in the file system and uh, <laughs> then you can't write it to disk. But you can do this, and you will need uh, the file system mo kernel module in your init ID, etc. So there are there are, part, there are um, tools to help you to to that that up so that that you don't need like a full blown init RD which will just uh waste memory for which will just waste memory that you don't really need <coughs> uh, normally these distribution parts also have a, a way to say that you automatically uh, make a, 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 a and store the dump automatically to somewhere so you don't have to do any uh, manual intervention and then reboots the system so that at least the system comes up again and your your downtime is minimal while you, you can then in, uh, investigate what really happened. And uh, at SUSE and OpenSUSE we use a program that's called KDump with capital K, <laughs> which is a Swiss Army knife for setting up a KDump. So it has basically two parts. So there's one part for the production system which is uh, some Dracut scripts to create the init ID and uh, some bash scripts to load the capture system, which basically calls kexec minus lp with the kernel init ID, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a tool to uh, approximate the size of the reserved memory area so that, that you don't have to do a, a, a try and error. And on the capture system side, they can configure it, uh, how to create a, the dump. This is done mainly by using make uh, make dump file, which where you can decide, for example, if you want to uh, add free pages to your dump, or if you care about pages that are all zero, etc. Because if you just copy your all your memory, that might be a really really huge dump file, and there might be parts of the memory that you're not interested. And you can also define where where these uh, dump gets stored. So this is a configuration file. And if you're really lazy and you don't want to understand this configuration file, then you can use uh, a tool that's called YAS2, which is a OpenSUSE or SUSE configuration tool for the system. And there's a module called KDump. And you can see it here. Uh, this is, uh, it looks nicer if you start it from, from a GUI, right? This is from <laughs> Serial Console. Um, so you can decide, for example, if you want to compress the dump and uh, which pages you want to include into the dump. And you can also, for example, send up some email notifications so you get an email so, hey, one of your system badly crashed, uh, so you better have a look. Okay, uh, so I will give a quick demo. I hope you can do this because it's black and I wasn't able to change this. So what I am doing here is I'm starting a virtual machine uh, with QMU. This is an ARM64 machine. Also, my laptop is not ARM64. And uh, we can then have a look, for example, um, about how many CPUs. So we have two CPUs. We have 1.8 gigabyte of RAM. Um, we can have a look on this script. So I wrote a small script. Well, a script is just a one-liner, right? Uh, that actually loads uh, loads a kernel image uh, with an init ID. It ignores the checks because we want to be fast because we all want to go to lunch afterwards. And uh, it depends some command line options. So the command line options here is that you just start one CPU and uh, so you reset the devices. And one thing that I wanted to show, um, you can see in the production system, in the command line, on the kernel boot parameters, though that we have actually um, 180 megabytes of RAM reserved for, for the crash system. So if we now load this, we can so we, you have uh, also 
Und du legst es. Oh, wow. So, uh, you can see there, there are different SysFS files where you can see uh, if, if a, uh, if a um, crash system is loaded or if a normal kernel is loaded for just rebooting the kernel and not caring about crashes and the size of this. So, it should be loaded by now because we, uh, we loaded it. Yes, great. So, what we can do now is we we can uh, write. We can now write C. Uh, the value C to the SysRQ trigger. What it does, it create it crashes artificially your kernel, and this is used to just check out that uh, this actually works. So what we expect now that the capture system comes up and that we can then do some fancy stuff. So we can see here. <laughs> yes. We can see here, okay, so uh, we triggered a crash through, through sys, sysrq, which is a kernel null pointer dereference, and blah, 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 where it comes from. And it's in this, okay, we're stopping all the secondary CPUs, that was just one, and then it starts the crash, uh, the crash kernel, and then you can see here, well, the capture kernel, and then you can see here how the uh, capture kernel comes up. So that's the first step, so really good. We can now see uh, proc CPU info that should only have one CPU because we passed this max CPU equals one. That's the case. So we would expect we had 1.8 megabytes, uh, gigabytes of RAM in the production system that we would expect like 180 megabytes now. It's actually 147 megabytes because you have some part from the reverse surf memory area which is used by the KXX segments. And uh, what else can we do? We can do. We can. We can have a look on the um, device tree by, uh, device tree blob that gets created and that got updated by KXX tools. So you can see we have here the Wi-Fi map and uh, we have here the init RD. And up here we have uh, the usable memory range that uh, the KXIC tools added in the ELF core header and where this can be found. And now the last thing I want to do is um, there's another tool in KXIC tools which is called VM core DMASK, which basically takes a dump file and uh, extracts from the dump file the kernel and the kernel log. So this can be used to have a quick look what actually happened. And we can do this here. And then you can see, OK, uh, it crashed. Uh, it crashed because we sent uh, uh, the SysRQ trigger a crash. OK, so uh, well, so our capture system is working, so we're really happy. Uh, I added some references here for you in case that you want to read a bit more about it. This is the source code of the KXIC tools. It's on, uh, on gitkernel.org. Uh, there are some SUSE documentation of how to set the things up. This is the source code of the KDump program used by SUSE to make things easier. And there's also a nice blog uh, that explains more or less the same that I explain here. So. If you don't understand what, or if, you, if it wasn't understandable what I explained, or you don't trust me, then you can read it there. And okay, well, maybe quick some takeaways. I think we are on time. Oh, not too much. Okay, so uh, basically, um, basically how this works, like the key points that you should uh, recognize uh, or uh, re uh, remember. You have a reserved memory area, and the capture system gets saved in this area. In the ELF core header is used, it points to all these uh, memory locations in your production system where uh, uh, the information can be found. And the capture system then out of this information creates uh, 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 
this uh, dump file. Okay, thanks a lot, and uh, if you have any questions, please feel free. Is the capture kernel uh, built uh, set, like with any changes from the production kernel, or can you have one uh, built ahead of time that you just reuse uh, that's compatible with your target? Yeah, and well, uh, it depends. So I mean, uh, no, what we at, at SUSE, OpenSUSE do, we reuse the kernel because we have the kernel with uh, like everything built as a module, and then we just put in the init ID the modules that we need. So you get it's. That means it's not something that you need to reboot the kernel. You can, if you want to, you 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 could also like build in the the drivers that you need in the kernel and use this, but it's not necessary. So no. <laughs> okay. No more questions. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, see you. Ha, 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 ha.